All right, hello Moto America fans and welcome to this special video edition of Off Track with Carruthers and Bice. I am Bice, Carruthers is on the other side of the table here. And uh, we're at uh, the Brickyard, um, the racing capital of the world, Indianapolis Motor Speedway. And we're here with Matthew Skoltz with Westby Racing, who is one of our superbike riders and is currently one point out of second place in the standings. He's having a really good year. He's had a long string of podiums. And uh, Matthew has been at Indianapolis Raceway before, uh, Motor Speedway before. Uh, may maybe you don't know that, but he is, of course, he's from South Africa, as you do know, but he was here in 2008. So welcome, Matthew. Yeah, pleasure, um, so thank you for, uh, for having me out. Tell us about, just let's talk about 2008. I mean, I'm amazed that I, you told me in, in your quote, and I was like, oh, yeah, that's right. Red Bull rookies at that time. So, yeah, yeah. tell us about it. Yeah, um, I actually went to the qualification round back in 2007, and then uh, 2008 was my first full uh, um, season in the Rookies Cup, and they, they had this um, shootout where the top 10 U European guys versus the top 10 uh, uh, USA guys, and my whole goal was to just, just qualify and be in the top 10 so we could come and challenge the boys over here, and I think at that stage I was maybe sixth or seventh in the championship. So yeah, I made, uh, made my way here, part of the top 10 European guys. And yeah, um, they ended up finishing second here. So that was one, one of my uh, fondest um, uh, memories, racing in the uh, Rookies Cup, coming to such a famous track and doing, and doing um, uh, a well with the whole world watching. Was well, it intimidating for you at all? I mean, was it, was it like, uh, you know, all the people that are here for MotoGP and, and uh, just you knew growing up, you knew about Indy, I'm sure. So was it? Did you feel, or once you get on the track, are you okay? Yeah, I mean, once you're actually on the bar, you don't really think too much about that. You're just out there, you know, um, they're pushing hard, hitting your um, uh, markers. But I mean, uh, previously 2007, all the racing that I had had done was uh, back home. Um, so you know, coming to to such a famous circuit, it was. It was something, you know, um, um, uh, special and pretty big, and you know, I, I just really wanted to do to do well, and yeah, it it worked out nicely. Yeah, I was just gonna say, is it <clears throat> was it special from for a kid from South Africa? Did you know about the Indy Five Hundred and stuff? But it sounds like you did. I didn't really, um, but obviously coming here, that's all you know. Everybody um, uh, uh, spoke about was the famous brickyard here and the famous indie indie track and then actually I just, I just started researching everything and found out and to be up on the podium here is definitely one of my highlights well it, it was interesting that weekend too because there was a red bull u.s rookies cup race and jake gagne who's racing as you know in in series and you're yeah, one I'm point behind him a second in <laughs> yeah, the championship yeah, now so 12 years on <laughs> yeah, and we're you back here, jake. <laughs> <laughs> and and you were like you said you had the 10 top 10 and it was all it was like a match race kind of thing with yeah. the u.s guys so that was cool that they did that back then and and looking back at red bull you rookies uh what did that mean to you and what does it mean to you now was that kind of you think that really got you started well, I mean, I started, you know, I'm uh, racing back home, and I didn't ever think that I would be racing as a career or my um, uh, job. Now, I was just a kid racing, and I just, you know, loved loved the sport and and riding bikes and stuff. And then um, once I qualified for the Rookies Cup, that was when me and my and my dad started talking about that I could actually make this my like future job and and make it a, a career racing racing bike. So I think. 2007 qualifying for the Rookies Cup uh, was was where this whole thing, you know, I'm like kicked off really. Did you think it would lead to something quicker sooner? Definitely. I uh, went to the Rookies Cup 2008 till 2010, and then went to Moto Moto 2 in the Spanish Championship. Teammates with with Gagne back then too, um, and then I went to the World Supersport for two years after that. Then I went back home for another two, two years and. Um, at that point, I was 22 or 23, maybe, and you know things weren't really lo looking good. I didn't have any, you know, funds to to actually pay for you know um, the uh, rides overseas again. And then 2016, got the opportunity to come here, and then you know I did pretty well. And then Westby signed me 2017, and it's been a dream come true since then. Was Moto America like even on your radar, or how did you stumble uh, into uh, just being here? No, I mean, Cameron Peterson was probably the first uh, South African guy that, that I was racing with uh, back home that started racing here. And 
I think 2015, and he mentioned something because you know um, Europe was pretty dead end there. You had to pay large, large sums of cash to actually ride for for decent teams there. And he he mentioned something about me coming here, and you know it, it was kind of like that sounds cool, but we didn't really take it seriously. Then 2016, I was riding for Sheridan's uh, dad back home. Um, uh, Ricky um, and uh, unfortunately Sheridan crashed he got hurt and then kind of filled in for him here um, and that, that's where the whole thing kind of you know kicked off. You call him every day and thank him? <laughs> I should but uh, <laughs> I have definitely thanked him you know Ricky I, I know he'll probably be uh, be watching this so thank you I mean he kind of gave me a, a second chance at this whole you know riding career thing and couldn't be happier you know I'm, I'm, these are the best uh, of, of the days for me now. Cool. Now, it's funny, I was going to write a story about this, but I, and I probably will eventually, but I want to talk to you about something that Paul and I have discussed a little bit. So it's you, there's Cam Peterson, um, there's uh, Samuel Doyle. Lockoff, Dominic uh, Doyle, and um, that's four guys. Yeah. Uh, what is it about, how did that happen? I mean, how is it with South Africa coming over here? I mean, it's a long ways from here, obviously. I so. have no clue. Um, the, the racing back home isn't as big as it is here, but somehow we've just produced really talented guys. I mean, you've got both of the Binder boys riding in, in MotoGP and Moto3 now. You've got Steven Odendahl in the World Super Sport Championship. You've got Brent Bjorn riding in the British Superbike Championship. So, I mean, there's quite a few of us that have raced together and are now, you know, um, um, spread out throughout the whole um, uh, uh, world somewhere. That's pretty great for that country. And I mean, the country is good size, but it's not huge in any way. It's just amazing that much talent comes out of a place, you know, that, that people, I mean, I know they've had rounds of MotoGP or, or Grand Prix in the yeah. past, Kyalami and whatever. So it's always yeah. been into racing from that point of view, but it's something, yeah. but I almost feel like, I mean, I guess you're right, Cam was, Cam had been racing here and then you came, you started racing, but, yeah. um, and I know Sam started out on Westby racing for a little bit and was one of your teammates yeah, and yeah. moved on to a different team. But it is, it is pretty cool that, you know, you've got those two younger guys and I see you a lot in the paddock talking to a lot of the younger riders, you know, do you feel a responsibility to be a mentor for younger riders or are you just a friendly guy? What, what do you? Uh, I like to think I'm just a friendly guy, you know, <laughs> but if somebody asks me something, I'm always willing to, to, to help them out as long as they're not beating me, <laughs> I guess. But yeah, I mean, um, when I was I'm a, at that point trying, trying to, to get quicker, a, a little bit younger, it was always nice to kind of speak to the bigger foster guys and kind of learn what their secrets were and just, you know, um, uh, hang out and just listen to them. And, you know, all of these kids now are, Training hard, riding extremely quickly, so I know that I'm going to have my 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 hands full soon in the, the next couple of uh, years. Is this is this your best year so far? By oh, far, I mean, me and the whole Westby team have been have been speaking about this. Obviously, 2017 winning the uh, winning the stock championship was something special for us. You know, carrying on the legacy of the Westby team and kind of finishing off the business kind of by way Dane left things off. Um, 2018 moved up to the Superbike category with a half stock, half Superbike, and we did pretty well then. And then last year I got, got the full spec Superbike, pseudo swing arm, this magnetic Marilli system. And you know I really thought that I would be challenging up front at every single track that we went to, and it was just a disaster. I, I wouldn't say a absolute uh, disaster, but I kind of really thought that we would have done better. I think I only podium six out of 20 races. Um, so it wasn't what we, you know, were like thinking that, that things would be. And this year started off well and just seems that we have been getting stronger and uh, stronger and stronger at every single track. And we kind of closed up to Bobier fighting for second in the championship. So, yeah, I mean, we couldn't be, be happier. And yeah, these are the best of times for us. So this is something I have to ask you about. I, I haven't mentioned this to you, but it was in my head. I was thinking, OK. Everybody seems to pretty readily admit that Cameron Bobier is kind of on another level a little bit. For but, sure. Yeah. And I'm thinking, <laughs> okay, so Matthew's like, you know what, maybe maybe finishing second in the championship and beating Jake is, that you know, that's, that's well, kind this of... this year, yeah, yeah that is that is definitely our, our goal this year. Um, obviously, before the season, we all talked about how winning the championship would be some, something you know, special for us. But I kind of figured that 
a top three the, this year would be really, really solid um, for us. And then now that, that we're knocking on sec second place, I really want, want to finish second and kind of, kind of uh, separate the top two Yamaha um, um, uh, attack performance guys and, and, and slot into second place. But I think that, that we have really showed that, we, that we're capable and hopefully next year should be challenging for the championship if things carry on how they are now. As long as Cameron doesn't get even quicker, <laughs> but we'll see. So, so here's the here's the thing that surprised me. So I'm like, okay, that that's a that's a realistic goal. But I'm like, you know, you always want to win win races. And yeah. Barber, you led the race on Sunday. I mean, a couple corners. Well, uh, I know every it. time I tell you that, you say that you you kind of self deprecate on that. But the point is, you were leading the race. Yeah. You you're not you're not just like. Okay, Cameron's whatever. I'm just going to be happy where I'm at. No, you, yeah. you wanted to win that race. You still continue to want to win win races. No, I mean for sure. And I mean I know that the Westby guys put their hearts and soul into it every sing, single time. I ride as quick as I possibly can, um, and we're here to you know contend and try to to um, to win you know races and stuff. And um, I feel like we've been closing the gap down slightly. So. You know, it kind of feels like we are there now, and I feel like our like our breakthrough should be should be coming soon. You know, and um, obviously it would be nice to be you know battling and passing him, but you know he's he's riding extremely well. So we just got to figure out uh, one or one or two things more, and we'll be right there. You know, I, don't, I feel like we are on the cusp of of greatness. Mm. <laughs> now you've never said this, and to your credit, and the teams that basically a privateer uh, an upper level privateer team yeah, yeah what is there a big difference between his bike and yours because you never mentioned that and maybe there isn't a big gap uh no um we got the same software version um their swing arm is a little bit different to us from what i know which i don't know too much about the specs of their bikes and our bikes but i know that their swing arm is a little bit different i know i think that that's one of richard's custom bolt swing arms um, but otherwise, the rest of the box is the same. We're using um, the um, uh, attack performance, triple clamps, rear sets, everything out. So we're pretty much on the same bike as them. Um, I think that the engine package might be a little bit different, but um, but the difference between me coming first and second isn't the bike, you know, right now. But I think that Richard has a couple of years more on that bike and, and being able to kind of um, carry on um, uh, development. So I think that next year, now that we have all of the data and stuff like that, I think next year will be uh, where we can, can can kind of start challenging. Is there one thing that he's doing better than everybody else or is it just little bits everywhere? Um, he's just able to get off the corner so quickly. I mean, it just seems like his, like his throttle control on the, the edge of the tire is really, really good. And I think that that's always been one of his um, um, uh, um, strengths. And, you know, I think that he's a very smooth guy, you know, which, which always uh, helps him. But I think, um, you know, it's just, it's, it's never that he's always quicker um, the, the, in one part. He's just mm -hmm. eking out a little bit here, a little bit there. So. So th the bike is pretty similar. And I know this year, the 2010 is a little bit different bike than it was before, but you've been racing. Is he a in 2010? I wish he was. It no, did I just say that? <laughs> yeah. 2020. God, where did, where did these last 10 years of my life go? That might help you, right? Yeah, yeah, I wish just, he was. Guys. It's all a blur. Yeah. I went from 2008 when he was here. Thanks for fixing that. Yeah. 2020. Okay, it's a 2020 model yeah. R1. And it's a little different than it was before. From from what we've heard, it's a better bike than it was, even though it, it looks kind of the same, but it, it's quite a bit different in terms of the performance. And you felt that the difference, obviously? Um, the, the, the biggest difference for me this year is the software version change that we, that we made uh, from, from last year um, the, to now, mm -hmm. uh, really. But I think that the Yamahas have always been um, one of the strongest superbikes. No, but I mean, you can clearly tell at every single track that we that we go to now that the lap times are considerably faster than they were the 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 last previous years. Mm -hmm. Whether that's us getting getting better, the bikes getting better, better teams, more time on the track, but we are definitely moving quicker than than we were last year, which always makes me feel better. But just that you know now everyone else is also going that much quicker too. So. 
Yeah. And so you've been on an R1 for a while. You were racing in stock 1000, super stock 1000. And you, you've probably been on this bike longer than you were on any other bike you've ever raced in terms of that make and, and that model of motorcycle. So yeah. where, do, where do you feel that you're at? Do you think like I've gotten pretty much everything I can get out of this bike? I mean, I guess we can squeeze a little bit more or you're still pretty early on and you've got so much more you can do to develop the bike. Where are you at in your mind about that? Um, you know, I've been riding Superbike since 2015 and I've only been on the Yamaha uh, R1 and um, I still feel like I'm getting quicker. Um, you know, I'm 28 now, which isn't young in Superbike years, but I still feel like I'm getting better and better. Every sing single year we go back to back to tracks, so I'm getting quicker, you know, lap time wise. So I think that there's more to come, really, hopefully. <laughs> I think in the past with you, we've seen like you, you're capable of getting second one week and then seventh or sixth, and yeah. that seems to be gone now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, would you agree with that? I mean, now it's like yeah, it's yeah. A, a bad day might be four. Yeah, I mean, for sure. Last year, it was a little bit um, uh, up and down. I crashed a bit last year when I sure shouldn't have. I was maybe trying to ride a little bit harder than than the package that, that we had at that time. And I think that this year, the bike is awesome. I think that the USB racing guys are doing a, an um, amazing job. And, um, you know, it seems that on our bad days, we still contending for the, for the podium spots, which is, uh, I think, proving just how far we have actually come. Well, in terms of your fitness too, you're you're obviously one of the most fit guys in our paddock, and I know you work out like a, a madman, but in a way, in such a way that helps improve your uh, your abilities on a track. Like you don't try to get too bulked up, and you do ride moto to to try to you know keep your feeling about the competitiveness that way. Yeah. Talk about your training regimen and any really how you you eat and everything too, because you uh, you've you've stayed the same guy for quite a while now. And, yeah, I mean, I've always just kind of felt that the that the team provides you with with uh, the best package that they can possibly give you. So you have to give your best self to to them. Um, and you know, um, whether I was racing bikes and uh, or not, I think fitness has been a pretty huge part um, of my whole um, uh, um, uh, life. Um, my dad's sixty three now, and he's still gym and works out every single day. So I think I just watched him do it and. It's just, you know, part of me now. And I always like eating healthy. It makes you feel better and stuff like that. So, you know, during the season, I'm pretty lean and stuff. But out of season, I don't do as, as much cardio. I like to bulk up a little bit. But, <laughs> I mean, yeah, like I was saying, you know, I'm the, that the team gives you their best package and you should always give them your best package. Is there anything that you cr you crave that you deny yourself because you're trying to stay fit? I mean, is there anything? Donuts, that's it, is donuts. That, <laughs> is that right? Okay. <laughs> I mean, right. Uh, out of season, I'll I'll eat a, a dozen donuts daily. <laughs> no, but, it's one season, one season. No, easy game, <laughs> easy game. But otherwise, yeah, I mean, in season, you're kind of counting Counting calories, macros, and everything Got it back else. Kind of six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Maybe one or or two. You, but I mean, yeah. You know, you kind of just count your like calories because also you don't want to be fluctuating, fluctuating in your in your um, uh, weight because otherwise the bike handles differently. You've been set up for a certain weight and everything else, so you kind of want to stay constant. One of the, I got to tell a quick thing about your dad. You know, you mentioned about your dad is 63 and the guy's in phenomenal shape. And yeah. Last year, I remember I was standing talking to him and I think you came in to off the pit wall or something and, you know, you unzipped your, your top of your leathers and kind of took them off and you're standing there, you know, and I look over at your dad and he goes, yeah, we're, we're just like twins, he and I. So he <laughs> <laughs> wishes that. <laughs> You wish, Dad. You wish. <laughs> I thought he, I was like I couldn't tell you apart. I mean, no doubt about it. Yeah. So. Hey, well, I mean, uh, at sixty-three, looking like that, I got something to look to look forward to. And Absolutely. If I can be uh, like that, then and, uh, I mean, hopefully, I will 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 still be racing motorbikes until then. That's cool. You know, the, one of the things, of course, we've said Matthews from South Africa, but he lives in. A suburb of, I guess, Atlanta, you could say. I mean, that's yeah. where you live now, and you've been, Aquip, lived there for yeah, a while. Yeah, probably about 40 minutes. From, 40 minutes. Yeah, from the studio. And he's sort of become an American. And he, last at Barber, he had a few friends come in, and, you know, it's came to see him race. And it was it's cool to hear that 
you know, you've got friends in that area, still friends back home and everything. So you obviously are enjoying living in America and it's, it's, is it where you're going to end up? Do you think? Yeah, I mean, I've, I've fully moved to this country now and, you know, I didn't ever think um, that I would be living in Georgia, but this is where, where I've, um, you know, I'm a, ended up and, you know, I love it here. You know, my life is I'm a, exactly what I wanted it, you know, I'm a, to be um, getting paid to actually race in motorbikes and the, I get to wake up daily, train, ride, hang out with the, my friends, do cool things and I get paid for it you know? mm-hmm. so I couldn't be happier and uh, thank you to, to the Westby team for actually making all of this possible already mm-hmm. um, kind of like what we Sean to do yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll accept the fitness part anyway, but I was thinking of the donuts maybe. yeah the donuts for sure um, one of the things that Matthew did recently which is cool is so so Dane Westby used to be pretty legendary at in CMRA, which is Central Motorcycle R- Racing Association. And Hallett was his home track in Oklahoma. And every year they have a Dane Westby Classic. And this year it was it was delayed because of COVID, but they had it a couple weeks ago. And Matthew went down and yeah. you, what moral support to everybody's there, signed autographs. You know, that was cool that you showed up and Yeah, I did mean, that. just went, yeah. I mean, I went and visited Craig, um, he lives up there and just kind of hung out wearing, handed out shirts and stuff, just showed some face. And you know, it's always cool going going back to the local c- club racing because that's where I, where, where I also started. You know, nobody hops on a bike at the top national national level. So, you know, it's always cool just to go and be out there, um, you know, be with Trig there and, you know, show um, um, uh, support and, and just, just be a, a part of it. Yeah, and with all respect completely to to Peter, your dad, sixty three, and looks just like him, and you know, especially when your shirts are off. Trig, Trig You've is seen kind of, both of their shirts. Off. No, but I'm just imagining. I mean, genetics, whatever. It's hereditary, you know. It's just I have a vivid imagination. Yeah. But but Trig is kind of a father figure for you, isn't he? I mean, he you you look up to him. You you care about him a lot and race for him. I mean, talk about your relationship with Trig. I love the guy. Um, he's like a, a second dad. Um, um, uh, you know, to me, he's looked after me. I go visit him. You know, we always phone each other up. And um, you know, I know that the Westby Racing Team was, was actually started for his son Dane, and it was actually it's actually been awesome to be a part of it and to be considered their guy and to be re- representing them. So I mean, I couldn't be happier. And Triggers and um, an uh, amazing guy. You know, he's the most genuine, down-to-earth guy. There's no bullshit. Um, excuse my French. I'm um, sorry. He's just yeah, just to hang out and just just be part of it. Uh, he's awesome. <laughs> one, one of the things that's interesting about the Westby team is, you know, the team manager is Chuck Giacchetto, who is a, a personality in and of his, in, in his own, and there's nobody else like him. And he's got an interesting relationship with Matthew. I know he rides him a lot, but he also mm-hmm. loves, loves Matthew a lot. And one of the things lately, he's been busting on Matthew because, and I kind of caught into it too, he calls it a porn stash. I call it a seventh grade yeah. mustache. But um, what's, what's his problem with your facial hair? I mean, I think it's a good uh, look for you. I don't know. He just gives me crap for it. It looks like I'm in grade seven, I mean, <laughs> apparently. But you know, I, I grow it out just to, to piss off uh, people. Uh, yeah, I mean, Chuck is great. You know, he's an awesome guy, um, wears his heart on his um, uh, uh, sleeve, and he's a huge part of the Westby racing squad, and you know, it's always fun when he's there. Yeah. He's probably pissed because you can grow more on your lip than he can grow on his head. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> that's it. That's time, it. Though, but yeah, no, I mean, I just uh, mess around. You know, I wasn't blessed with like massive sideburns or anything <laughs> crazy. So this is about as bad as things get. You know? I lo- I, it's great. So really, so when you were in seventh grade, did you have a mustache like that? Uh, no, I didn't grow facial hair until I was like 21. So, <laughs> so this is it. No, I'm just making, making up for it now. Guys. No. Uh, that's good. Um, so we've got this round and then, and then we've got, it's three races this weekend. And of course, I know we've already mentioned about your phenomenal fitness. Um, probably not concerned about that at all. Or are you thinking, wow, two races in a day are going to be tough. What do you think? No, um, uh, the biggest worry for for me now is that it could be, um, uh, wet uh, on Sunday and two and two wet, um, races could, could really shake things up. So I think that's the biggest worry, uh, right now, but. You know, we just uh, going to take things as they come. Mm-hmm. 
Well, in Matthew, I mean, you, you've, I, I hate to even mention this because I know <laughs> but you he will, but, yeah. but I will because <laughs> we know each other well <laughs> enough. I know, I know you're not known. I, I, you're not known as just being a rain rider, but you happen to be really good in the rain and you yep. happen to have won a couple of super bike races in one wet conditions. The other was pouring down rain. So yeah, I know uh, you want to win one in the dry, but Hey, if it rains, not so bad. Yeah, I mean, um, unfortunately, well, not uh, unfortunately, fortunately, two of my only superbike wins did did come in the wetter conditions, so it would be nice to actually take a, a dry victory, but a win is a win, right? I'll take it. <laughs> well, what what is it about? I mean, I'm not saying, that's why I'm not trying to peg you as that, and I know it's an issue, so I don't want to go there too much, but... Is it is it because what what is it about some riders that can go so well in the, in the is it smoothness because nobody's smoother I don't think than Cameron Bobier and he yeah, does pretty good um, in the rain too but you're exceptional with it what why um I'm not sure to be honest um I push just as hard as I do in the, the dry I feel the bike move just as I would but I just seem to be a little bit higher up on you know the grid or on the paper afterwards so I mean I've I like to think that from my motocross background, it gives you quite a, a good feeling of, of where the bike's at. So, I mean, maybe that that helps me. But yeah, I mean, um, even in the Red Bull R- R- Rookies Cup, my only victory then came in the the wet condition. So, um, yeah, um, you know, next year we're just going to have to just wet the uh, track every <laughs> single race. Well, um, 2008, wasn't that when that hurricane was coming through here in Indy? Was it wet for your race in Red, Red Bull Rookies? Yeah, yeah, it was. <laughs> Oh, it pouring down. So. Yeah. A nightmare. So, yeah, so there you go again. But listen, we're not trying to peg this guy as being, that's all his talent is, but it, <laughs> it shows the real talent comes up when the traction's a little, little iffy. But yeah. I wanted to ask you, do you, do you, when you race, do you not understand some of the things you do? I mean, is it something that's a feel you can't quite put it into words to, uh, you know, your race craft or, you know, how did I do that? Do you ever surprise yourself, I guess? Uh, no, you know, when you, when you're out there riding, it's kind of just all of the years that you've been doing it, they kind of just like add up and you kind of make these crazy saves or whatever. But in the moments of you doing it, it's just a like, you know, natural thing that just happens. Your body just naturally does whatever you need to do to kind of save a front end tuck or a massive like high side moment or something. And I can't really... I don't even know what I do, whether I squeeze my legs or grip on the, the tang harder, whatever, you know, it's just kind of over the years of crashing multiple, multiple times and multiple saves. I think, I think, yeah, I think you, you just get into to that zone where you kind of just, just like ride and whatever happens, you just um, 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 uh, respond to it naturally. Well, listen, I mean, rain or, or dry here this weekend. I mean, it's going to be good on Saturday. Good luck to you with three races this weekend. I mean, it's great. And I know you're pursuing that second place and getting a win and all that. So we wish you luck on that. And thanks for joining us on this podcast. So look, if you are if you were a betting man and you were going to Vegas, would you bet on yourself or on Gagne? Um, sure. That's a hard one, hey? I mean, he was a couple a couple points up so, and I'm only one point back um, uh, uh, you know now so I think that there's more pressure on Jake and I, I'm also considering he's Cameron's team teammate who's up front so I think it kind of puts a little bit more like pressure onto 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 Jake but I don't want to tell him that because he handles pressure well so, right. <laughs> so I'll just keep quiet and just you know ride as quick as I possibly can. And of yeah. course, you guys are good friends too. So it's, oh, no, it's all he, he's awesome. I mean, yeah. every every single one of the the super bike guys are really awesome people. Whether it's Bobie, Gagne, Tony, Fong, I mean, Heron, I mean, everyone are just awesome guys. And from when I, I came here, 2016, I was you know started making friends, and I felt like you know I, I was welcome, and everyone's like just like family now. You know, I, I look forward to actually coming out and and seeing everyone here. We try well, to get you guys to fight, and nobody will. <laughs> right. We can fight, boy. You want to? Yeah, maybe you guys have to do that. I don't think people do are going to come watch that. <laughs> <laughs> I'd watch it. That's for it sure. It wouldn't last long. <laughs> no, it'd yeah. be quick. It'd be quick. But no, thank you, Matthew and Paul. It, this was a good one for us. I'm glad we did this. It's great to be here at Indy, and we we want to tell the fans. You know, this weekend we've got six classes racing, including um, we've got Heritage Cup, the Vintage Bikes. And uh, this is a great track. It's iconic in so many ways, and the road course is that way too. So 
Um, we're excited to be here. We hope you'll, you'll watch the live TV um, around the world. We're on Eurosport, Fox Sports 2, Fox Sports 1. The Super Sport guys are on MAV TV. And of course, we've got Moto America Live plus our live streaming and video on demand service. Lots of ways to watch, watch Matthew Even and the rest South of the Africa, writers. In them. South Africa, yeah, yeah. we've got, we've got a, a South African Sports Network as part of our group now too. So yeah. um, we've got a lot of ways to watch and so it'll be this round, and then we've got Laguna coming up in another couple of weeks. And, uh, you know, so subscribe to Moto America Live Plus if you're not here or even if you are here. And if you're here, we're glad glad to have you here with us, and it's going to be a fun weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Pedro Garcia.